Chris Norman is a singer, musician and songwriter who grew up in Bradford. Between 1974 and 1982, he achieved huge international success of lead singer with the band Smokey. Smokey's second single to be released in the UK, If You Think You Know How To Love Me, reached number three in the UK singles chart and began a run of 12 consecutive chart hits for the band. Chris left Smokey to pursue a solo career in 1982 and had success particularly across other parts of Europe. He's now recorded 20 solo albums and his latest release is titled Rediscovered Love Songs. I met up with Chris on Zoom at the beginning of November. I began by asking him about his latest album. It is a it is a covers album. It's not it's a it's a bit of a departure for me because I don't normally do stuff like this. I usually do new songs albums because there was um, a period where there was nothing much to do. All the concerts I've been supposed to be doing were postponed and everything. And uh, I, I found myself like a lot of people, especially in the music business, well in any business, but in the music business with nothing much to do. And somebody suggested, "Why don't you do another album?" I said, "I've just done an album." <laughs> I haven't got any more songs, you know. I'm yeah, finished yeah. with that for now. And they said, well, "Why don't you do a, a a love album, a love songs album of, of other people's songs, which, it, as you say, is a covers thing?" And I thought, "Well, I don't know if I want to do that." But then I thought about it a bit, and so I I just asked everybody that I knew, old friends and family, and everybody, just send me a f- list of your favorite love songs of all time. And um, I got like sixty songs something like that at the end Mm -hmm. which was miles too many you know so I I just started to sift through them and I'd already sort of chosen a few that I liked myself Mm -hmm. so um, I just kind of looked at them and thought well I I really love that song but um, can I sing it and then if if I thought I could sing it I'd think okay that'd go on the short list and then there was some that I really liked but I thought well I don't want to do that like something like Imagine by John Lennon I was thinking no I don't want to touch that. It's a classic. I'm not going to start, you know, messing around with that. Um, but eventually I got to the to the 12 that I ended up with. And um, they're all covers of, of other people's songs. But the sort of songs that if I was listening to the radio and one of these came on, I would always turn up. So the, 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 the songs that I would like to listen to myself. And, uh, and then I just went in the studio and started recording them. I'd heard on YouTube that Chris had asked his friends and family for ideas for songs that he might record for this album. I put it to him that he was taking a risk asking them in case he didn't like their choices. Well, you know, they knew that I wasn't going to choose out everything they said, but it it was a useful thing to get people's, you know, to, to, to find out what the sort of feeling was about different songs. It's surprising how many of the same songs turned up on different people's lists. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and um, but as I say, I, I I wanted the album also to be I didn't want it to be all slow songs, and that's one of the the, the difficulties when you come to record love songs. They tend to be slow, and I thought, well, I can't put an album out full of I could, but I don't want to. I want it to have different things, and finding up tempo love songs was it was more difficult, but I managed to. You know, I managed to find um, yeah. Various tempos, and and I didn't want them all to be old. I didn't want them all to be new. I just wanted them to be songs that I liked. So there's songs on there like as far back as '65 by like My Girl by The Temptations yeah. or, or It's Red in whichever version you choose. Um, and uh, there's there's more race, recent things. One Just the Way You Are by Bruno Mars and Need You Now by Lady Antebellum or Lady A as they're called now. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, various songs, you know which I just really like myself. I asked Chris about his cover of the Travelling Wilburys' Handle With Care, where he'd managed to pull off being George Harrison, Roy Orbison and Bob Dylan all in one song, I thought, quite successfully. I had to be careful not to put the same sort of echo on the voice because with with, with that, you know, Jeff Lynne's production, I'm a big fan of Jeff Lynne anyway, which yeah. is why I did. I'm a big fan of the Wilburys. Um, but why I've done two songs that were Jeff Lynne produced, which was that one and um, Drove All Night by Roy Orbis. Okay. And yeah. they're yeah. both Jeff Lynne productions. And I had to be careful not to make them sound because Roy Orbison, he always has this kind of delay echo on his voice and he's got this smooth voice, you know, I'm so tired of being. Yeah. They used to call him the, the trembling Wilbury, didn't it? I think, and um, and uh, you know, and he had that echo, and, and that was the sound that made it sound like Roy Orbison. I thought, well, if I just sing it as me, yeah, it won't sound like Roy Orbison, but it'll be the same tune. And then the middle bit, where that the funny thing is in that song as well, that when it gets to that middle bit with um, 
Bob Dylan, as you say, and Tom Petty yeah. singing together, I think. Um, it's got this very dry sound to it, yeah. you know. But I kept the vocal with the same kind of EQ, the same kind of sound, same kind of effects, um, which wasn't over overly done. And it just sort of, you know, sounds like me all the way through. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but I love the song, you know, and... Uh, whether I did it and pulled it off or not, I enjoyed recording it because it's such a great song to do and to play all those riffs and stuff that were on it. Um, and that, the, the 12 string electric playing all those rundowns and that was great. And, it, I, is- and because I was on my own, I was playing everything myself. Again, reflecting on comments that Chris had made on YouTube, I put it to him that his Bruno Mars cover of Just The Way You Are had been a particular challenge to him. Well, yeah, because um, Bruno Mars is a kind of bit more funky artist than, than I would be. Yeah. You know, I'm sort of more straight, what, whatever you would call what I do, sort of mm, soft rock yeah. or rock, whatever. I don't know. Um, so the challenge with that was, is it is am I, am I going to make myself look silly trying to attempt to do something that's not really my thing? Um, but I just thought, well, I'll, I'll, I'll go for it. And... Um, you know, things like he, he's got like a, a, a beatbox drum thing going on, which has got this kind of shuffle yeah. thing going all the time. Um, so I thought, okay, well, I can, I can do that. And um, I, I found a beatbox in my plugins on Pro Tools and got that going. And um, yeah, I mean, really, once you get into it, it's just a good tune, you know, yeah, yeah, a good yeah. song. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I already tested out to see if I could sing it and, and you know, get, get the, the right feel to my voice with it. And I thought, well, it's different to him, but it, it, it sounds OK, you know. So it was a bit of a challenge to start with. But once I got into it, um, it became easier. And in the end, I was quite pleased with the result. I thought Chris had done a particularly good job of covering the Ewan McCall song, The First Time Ever I Saw Your Face. And I asked Chris about this. I nearly didn't do that one, to be honest with you, because that was suggested by one of my managers. I've got two managers. And I said, oh, that's that's like, you know, you've got to have one of those smooth, flowing voices, you know, to do that. And they just were saying, well, I think you could sing it. And I said, I don't know. So anyway, I got in. And, it, and, the, and the musicality of it they, was kind of difficult because I didn't have an orchestra in the other room or anything. So I had to do it all on uh, sampled keyboards with, with the with the uh, tuba on it and the oboe at one point and strings. And so I had to play all those parts and singing it, you know, was, you know, I thought, am I going to be able to do it? But I just got into it. And yeah, once you get a pair of headphones on and the music's flowing over you, the, the, the voice just sort of goes with it, you know? So yeah, I'm happy with the way that turned out. Yeah. Again, not really a song that I would have thought would be me, but it turns out all right. Chris suggested that he played most of the instruments on the album himself. He explained. There was a couple of uh, keyboard parts, like which I did record, um, but I thought it could be better. So I, I took it to Nashville, and I got uh, somebody in Nashville to put the, some piano parts on that were would, would, would be a bit more flowing than I would play. I, okay. I can play keyboards, but I'm not, I wouldn't call myself like a wonderful pianist, but I can play keyboards. So I did all the other keyboards, all the paddings and all that, and I played that. But I got this guy to play a couple, like always on my mind, and make you feel my love. I had a nice piano part on it, which I'd played, but he played it better. So, uh, and then I got, I'd, I'd used it like a drum sample through throughout the whole thing because being on my own, I had to. And I got the, the drums all replaced uh, in Nashville. Um, but apart from that, I played everything else, bass and everything. Oh, and my guitar player, it was in my touring band, Jeff Carline. Um, he played oh. some because he's real kind of good blues guitar player, and I played some of that stuff. But some of the the real bluesy stuff, I said, you "Fancy this?" And he does, of course, and he just plays it so much better than I do. So those bits I, I added to from other people, but the rest yes. of it I played. Them. And I asked Chris if his record company had released any singles yet from the album. The powers that be in the UK have put out "Always on My Mind" as the first single. Okay. Um, in Germany, they've put out Niji now as the first single. It's really just, uh, you know, that's the album. I just give the album, say, you know, if you want to put out a lead track or a trailer for it, yeah. you decide what you think will be right for your, your country. You know? I see, okay. Um, that's the best way of doing it, because if I start saying, oh, that's got to be the... And with this <laughs> album, to be honest, it was so difficult because originally they were all hit singles, you know. 
for somebody, for yeah. whoever did them originally. So it's difficult to say, well, that's the single, because they all are. So I left it up to the whoever, which in, a, in every territory, which one they wanted to lead with. I'd noticed that the majority of tracks on Smokey's 70s albums had been written by the band, but that the group's hits had almost all been written by Chin and Chapman. Had this been a problem for the group? Here's Chris. To be honest, to be fair, when we first signed to Rack Records and Chin and Chapman, um, they were the, the kings of, of writing hit tunes, you know. Yeah. So we were pretty grateful to get those tunes. But even from the first album, we had songs on there that we thought were single contenders yeah but when you're with a record company that's run by mickey most and he's got these two talented songwriters called chin and chapman who've just had like the last few years like number one records one after another he's likely to go for what they've written because he that they, they've proven themselves have got yeah. a good track record so it was always difficult to get past that yeah. um i shouldn't complain because we had a lot of hits with them but it was after a couple of years, we started to say, what about the Mexican Girl was mine and Pete's. So that was a hit. Right. And that was probably the first single that was released uh, that we'd written. But there was others before that thinking me, the lonely one going home. There was a few songs that we felt could have been singles and might have taken us in a slightly different direction because it wouldn't have been, you know, quite so living next door to Alice, if you like, because that's yeah. sort of the direction that people think of us in. And we weren't that really originally. Um, so we could have probably, but on the other hand, you know, looking back on it now, even the ones that I wasn't keen on at the time, they all become like favorite children because once you start playing them to an audience and they go crazy as soon as you start playing it, you tend to fall in love with it yourself because yeah. it's such a great thing to have in your back pocket, you know. Yeah, yeah. Prior to the pandemic, Chris had teamed up with Smokey 70 producer and writer Mike Chapman producer of Blondie's Parallel Lines album, by the way, to record an album. Here's Chris. I, I had an album out in 2019, where I recorded an album in 2019, which was all new songs. And uh, I worked uh, with Mike Chapman, who was um, the, uh, the Smokey producer back in the day. And I, he just happened to come to a gig I was doing. And we ended up getting together uh, over a few drinks at his, at his place and decided, why don't we do something, you know? And that's how that album came out. Um, but that came out in 2020, was it? Was it? I, I lose track with the <laughs> periods that we weren't doing anything, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. But it was sort of got lost with the COVID thing. I mean, it sold some albums. And Chris explained how things had now moved on regarding himself and Mike Chapman. Now it's a completely different situation. You know, we now we sit together like it's equals. At the beginning, he was the guy who was successful and was the producer, and we were the newcomers who were doing what we were told. Yeah. That changed within a year or two, but um, it was always that kind of dynamic. Um, yeah. But yeah. even even but now it's a different thing. When I when I sat down for this album in 2019, we just sat down, and listened to each other's songs. And um, I said, oh, I like that one. And, and play me, well, what about this one? I don't like that one. No, it's yeah. not me. And I was playing in my songs and he was going, oh, that's a great song. And So we, we didn't pick the songs like in that old way that we used to do. We just picked the songs that we both liked of each other. Yeah. Um, nice. And that was the album. And then they, they consequently, I think I, I wrote seven of them. He wrote four of them. And then we did a, a, another song from somebody else. So... That's how it was now. But in the old days, it was a bit more, well, you've just writing hits. Let's take one of theirs. You know? Yeah, yeah. I asked Chris if he'd done any writing with Mike Chapman. We did actually sit down and, and started to write a couple of things. We wrote one song, which we didn't put on the album because we hadn't finished it yet. And we were already due in the studio. And we wrote another song, which we started. So there are a couple of songs which are kind of unfinished, one of which I've finished now. Mm. Um, because I've been writing again since the last six months or so or more. So, yeah, there, there are some songs now that I've got new, which I'm really looking forward to doing, but not for a while yet. I'm not going to think about releasing them for ages now. Mm -hmm. But, I, you know, I'm, I'm stockpiling a few songs. And one of them is this song that I wrote with Mike back in 2019. So that could appear in on a future album. Chris Norman continues to tour, but not so much in the UK. Chris explained... A difficult market for me, the UK, because when okay. I went solo, I I, um, I had a big um, 
hit single called Midnight Lady, which went to number one, first of all, in Germany, and stayed there for six weeks, which was a great start. And then it spread into all over Europe. It was a hit all over um, mm. and the other countries too. But it, it didn't get any kind of showing in, in the UK at all. So that start of my solo career never happened in England. And um, so it's always difficult for me to come back into England because all the touring and all the things I've been doing over the last 20 years or more um, has always been in other countries. Mm-hmm. And so when I've tried to come back to the UK, it, it's difficult to get my um, brand over, if you like, you know, yeah. because it didn't start there. But I'm, I, I still want to. And I, we're trying, we're working on now. I mean, I'm, I play in Ireland and stuff, you know, I have yeah. big crowds in Ireland. They, they love me. And if, if they love me in Ireland, it's only across the water. You know, why shouldn't they love me everywhere else in the UK? And I know I've got a lot of, a big fan base, but um, it's just getting the right gigs for the right uh, and, and selling enough tickets to make it worth because it costs a lot. You know, I, when I when I do a tour, I, I'm, I'm, it's not like a little band with just three or four people go. I've got like 12 people on the road. I've got tour managers, lighting guys, and I won't do shows with just turn up and use the guys there because I want it to be how it's supposed to be. And all those people, like the lighting guy, the sound guys, they know what the show's about and how to get the right sound because of the tried and tested, you know. Um, So I need to bring everybody with me and it can be quite expensive. And if I'm not selling tickets or enough tickets, it can be very costly to do. But I'm trying. I, I'm doing. I'm doing Ireland again in February. I've got three or four shows. Four shows in Ireland in February, and we, at the moment we're trying to tag on some dates in the UK after that. So with a bit of luck, spring I might be there. I asked Chris Norman what material he now does when he plays live in concert. Yeah, it's it's a mixture. I I, I usually try and start off um, definitely with something new. Uh, at the moment, uh, the shows I'm doing, I'm doing a show off that album i talked about before just a man yeah which which was the one i did with mike um there's a song on there called good enough for rock and roll and it's a it's a real kind of rocky opener and there's even a line in the middle where it goes hello everybody hello everyone so that's the start and then i usually go from that into something like lay back in the arms of someone which is a smoky song and then do a couple of smoky songs then go back to do some solo stuff and i mix it up backwards and forwards like that um so that people have come just to hear the smoky stuff get a lot of that um people have come to hear my stuff get that in between as well so it's a mixture i asked chris if he would consider touring the uk anytime soon but no i think i think i would probably do all right i I think in most there's a lot of towns where i think i'm pretty sure i would sell pretty good but there's other ones i'm not sure of and uh we're looking into that anyway, um, okay. as I say, and I'm hoping even if it's only a, maybe half a dozen shows or something just to play up and down. Um, there's always been territories in England, even when I was in Smokey, that were better for us than others, you know. And would Chris consider playing St George's Hall in Bradford? Well, I'd love to. And they're, <laughs> they're telling me that they're doing up the Odeon as well. Yes, yes, indeed. Yes, yes. I think so I'd like be... To, uh, yeah, it'd be great to play there. I, maybe it's it's a, going to be quite a big auditorium, I think. going to be about five 5,000 people. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd heard it was 6,000, but I may not be up to date. Uh, maybe well, you I'm more than me. Right. But yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what the time scale is on. There's been all kinds of hold-ups. Well, it was supposed to be ready through. ages ago, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I'd love to. Yeah. Um, right. I'd love to come and play in Bradford again. Thank you very much, Chris. Lovely to talk to you. You too. Thanks very much. Have a good day. day. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 And that was a recording of me, John Hebden, talking to Chris Norman in the first week of November to promote the release of his new album, Rediscovered Love Songs. And thanks very much to Chris himself and to his management for setting up the interview. And we'll finish with another one of those 1970s classic smoky hits. This is A Few Dollars More. Thank you for listening.